like a lot of people right now, I'm not really able to travel, but what I have been doing are like day trips locally to do some hiking and exploring of our natural areas. So I thought it would be good to just kind of go over how I pack to go hiking um, for safety and then also for fun and to make sure I'm covering a couple of things. So the first thing is prevention. You want to prevent having an issue. And the second thing is protection. So if you have an issue, what are you doing to protect yourself? And also, what are you doing to keep yourself safe um, or deal with a bad situation that may come? I have a pretty standard Teton backpack. It's pretty much just a day pack. And then I've got it with a two liter bladder and of course your straw. I find that the water bladders are my preferred way to hike and my preferred way to carry water. Um, some people like sort of hip packs and just like two little water bottles. Whatever you're into, just make sure you take water with you because you're gonna wanna, especially if you're hiking in the summer, lately around here it's been up to 100 degrees and then even in the mountains it's hitting in the 80s. Um, and sometimes in the sun, you're gonna feel like you're in like 90, 95 degree temperature. Just having some type of rain cover for your backpack. Mine comes with one. It just sits in there so in case you hit a really bad storm or you're hiking in somewhere that gets a lot of rain, this is good because it keeps the rest of your gear, including like your matches and other survival equipment dry so that you can also stay dry. I think it's good to start with kind of the emergency items that I don't really ever use but I want to have them just in case. It's kind of like you keep a few things in your car just in case of an emergency or you have insurance because 99% of the time you're never going to get in an accident, you're never going to have an issue but you have that jack, you have that spare tire, you have the insurance just in case something goes wrong. So I carry a life straw and this is really in case I run out of water or have some type of an emergency and I need to drink water from a non-potable source or from a live stream, that sort of thing. And basically what this does is it will filter out the bacteria and ensures a level of safety just in case of an emergency situation. The next thing I have is a Coleman emergency blanket. This is super lightweight, very small. And I just keep this, you know, on the off chance that I get stuck in a storm or something happens and I need to have some way to prevent hypothermia. And then I carry a basic knife just because you never know you might need it just for basic survival. So I carry that, I've never used it. I have a waterproof matches container that I just keep set of matches in. Um, these are usually just strike anywhere. You can do things like add a little piece of the starter um, into the cap so it's easy to light, but you can also do things like pull it on a zipper or a rock um, if you do need to light your match. The most important things that I hike with is sunscreen and I am very fair skinned. If you followed my channel, you know this. So I do at least an SPF 30 on my face with a hat and then I do an SPF 50 for the rest of my body. And I actually switched this year to making sure I'm wearing UPF quality clothing. So I'm wearing at least UPF 50 t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt, um, which means that I'm preventing any additional sun damage. And it actually, the shirts I have are moisture wicking, so they keep me cool. I think an important thing that you should never leave without is a little bit of food. So I usually pack two or three of these um, of some sort. So I, I do the protein bars because they have a little bit of sugar in them, but also some other nutrients that help with um, any type of fatigue or whatever you may need. Because there's nothing worse than like trying to hike and you're not feeling good because you haven't eaten enough or because you're hungry. And then the other thing is um, I take some ibuprofen. I usually take a little bit before I go hiking just because I have some joint issues from some previous surgeries and whatnot. But I take it just to kind of help with the inflammation and any pain I might have. And then I usually don't have to take it in the evening. Um, if you have any type of lung issues or you're not used to hiking at high elevations, I suggest getting an oximeter. Um, a lot of people have these nowadays because of the coronavirus but it will help you quickly test to make sure that your oxygen levels are still at a safe level if you're hiking um, I'm starting I have some lung issues and so this is really helpful for me to make sure that I'm doing okay and that I'm not putting myself in danger or I'm not hurting myself by hiking at a higher elevation 
Um, and then of course, you know, you want to know the symptoms of altitude sickness and how to treat that, which includes getting down to a lower level. I actually drive to most of my hikes in sandals. Um, driving in your hiking shoes is fine, or your hiking boots, or your tennis shoes, but it does put extra wear on the arches, especially because you're pushing down on the gears on the car, and they're not made to deal with that kind of wear and tear consistently. So my suggestion is to wear sandals, and then when you're done with the hike, it's gonna feel really good to take off your shoes and put on something like this, um, just to relax your feet and not have to be in confined boots, especially if it's hot important piece is having good footwear. You do not have to have expensive hiking boots to enjoy hiking or going out and getting outside. I invest in more because I'm planning on doing a lot of hiking in these and also some trekking, which is multi-day hikes, backpacking. And I have ankle support. I have a lot of foot, ankle, knee, back, hip problems, so I need the extra support. But for most people, a pair of tennis shoes are gonna be very comfortable to hike in. Especially if you're just getting started and just trying to see if you actually like hiking, if you actually like getting out. Especially as we're getting into colder months, I like to make sure that I have a couple options with me to stay warm. So this is just a basic fleece that I wear a lot when I'm hiking or going to somewhere to hike and say it's cold. I usually heat up really fast and then I just end up hiking in my t-shirt, even if it's like 45, 50 degrees. Something that I think is important is some type of rain jacket. This is a large one, but just to show you um, they do fold up pretty small and you may need this especially as we get into fall or I use this I end up using these a lot in the spring or hiking at high elevations in early summer just because there is a lot of precipitation but hiking poles are extremely helpful with rough terrain especially going downhill because it saves your knees it prevents you from putting a lot of pressure on your knees while you're walking downhill and it also increases your stability so it's not just for old people it's really just for rough terrain that you may run into. I got these at Costco for like 25 or $30. They don't have to be expensive. They're very lightweight. They're easy to hook on my pack and they make the journey a lot more comfortable. Forget myself included is to make sure you have some form of electrolytes. Um, water is great, but there is a point where you need some type of other energy usually. And so I, if you like a natural option, I prefer coconut water. I'll take one or two of these with me and keep one or two in the car for after the hike. Um, the other option is you can get like little packets of electrolytes that you can put in your water and those are good things to drink too and it does help with fatigue, exhaustion, muscle pain. Um, the other thing too is to maybe take some vitamins like magnesium, eat a couple bananas, you know there's simple things that you can do that are going to make it a lot better.